Brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. There's a story out there being misreported by the Catholic media and shared by faithful Catholics and has been misreported all weekend long. All weekend, we heard that Francis and the Vatican had rebuked the German synodal way. That's not what happened. Francis and the Vatican issued a statement to the German bishops telling them to wait for the rest of the synodal process to be completed, which will happen next year, in 2023. Reports from synods around the world all show the same thing. The vast majority of synods in dioceses and countries from across the Western world all are asking for the same things the German bishops are asking for. The only difference is that the German bishops have been moving to implement those requests. They've been doing it in a top-down manner. That's why their synodal way isn't strictly a synod. Yes, the laity are involved, but it's a top-down approach. And this is all what Rome is telling the Germans to slow down about. This is all part of a larger story I have for you today. This shows that Jimmy Martin is winning the rhetorical battle in the church. Let's get a closer look, starting with that statement from the Vatican. Bear this statement in mind from Christopher Lamb, who is a Vatican journalist for the tablet out of the UK, and he is very friendly to Rome, very friendly to Francis. After all, the tablet, the once mighty tablet, is now sort of a UK version of America magazine. Bear this in mind. Quote, the Vatican statement on the German Synod comes as bishops' conferences across the world submit reports to Rome on the findings of their listening and discernment processes. Many of these reports are raising similar questions to the ones Germany has been addressing. The difference, however, between Germany and the rest of the world has been the process. The rest of the synod is about first developing the practice of listening and discerning, bottom up, rather than the German focus on predetermined topics, down or top down, end quote. The German bishops have signaled their willingness to implement these changes without Rome. That's the crux of the issue not as the story reports. Headline from, v the v from Vatican News. Vatican warning. German Synod way poses, quote, threats to the unity of the church. Yes, that's a quote from the statement. The end goal of the synod is to have a unified implementation that is bottom up in orientation. They've learned, they meaning Rome, have learned from Amoris Laetitia and Traditionis Custodis, although the latter you could not possibly have done bottom up. But this is going to be one way forward, based on the voices of a badly catechized laity almost universally demanding the church get with the world on several issues. As Deacon Nick Donnelly stated on Twitter when this story broke late Thursday, quote, The Vatican's latest statement criticizing the German Synodal Way is not a rebuke of their heresies. It's just telling them to wait until 2023 before initiating, quote, new official structures or doctrines that will be agreed at the level of the universal church. New doctrines end quote. Here's the part of the so-called rebuke that has caused the stir and is being completely misunderstood. From the Vatican statement, quote, in order to protect the people of the freedom of God's people and the exercise of the Episcopal ministry, it seems necessary to make it clear that the synodal way in Germany does not have the power to compel bishops and the faithful to assume new modes of governance and new approaches to doctrines and morals. It would not be permissible to initiate new official structures or doctrines in the dioceses prior to an agreed understanding at the level of the universal church, which would represent a wound to ecclesial communion and a threat to the uni unity of the church. As the Holy Father recalled in his letter to the people of God who are on the way in Germany, the universal church lives in and of the particular churches, just as the particular churches live and flourish in and from the universal church. And if they find themselves separated from the whole ecclesial body, they will become debilitated, rot, and die. Hence the need to keep communion with the whole body of the church always alive and effective. Therefore, it is hoped that the proposal of the way of the particular churches in Germany will flow into the synodal path being taken by the universal church for mutual enrichment and a witness to that unity by which the body of the church manifests its fidelity to Christ the Lord, end quote. Meaning don't go your own way. We're all doing this together. New doctrines are on the table. They admit as much. They don't prohibit implementing new doctrines. They prohibit doing so without the universal church. And the synods from around the world are reporting the same things over and over again. They want the church to get with the world on opening ordination to women. They want the church to get with the world on the pastor Jimmy Martin's sin and on numerous other topics. 
Why? Because Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church is winning. If this was a rebuke, it would explicitly tell them that they were embracing heresy. But it didn't. In fact, Francis has actually written to them saying that they were doing excellent work the German Sonata way. He has done that. German outlets have published those letters. I have videos on them. This all comes while Pastor Jimmy Martin is getting endorsed by prelates from around the world for his work undermining the faith. Let's start with right here in the United States of America. Cardinal Dolan of New York has praised an organization called Outreach that Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church is affiliated with. He has called the work they do to regularize this sin courageous and used other disturbing language to describe things that exorcist tells us that even demons leave the room when certain sins are happening. Take that with a grain of salt, of course, because we are talking about the demonic here, kind of like Pastor Jimmy Martin's work, actually. The LifeSite article on Cardinal Dolan sheds some light on this rather demonic situation itself. From their article, quote, Cardinal Timothy Dolan of New York recently gave a strong endorsement of Father James Martin's activism in the dissident Jesuits' new acronym group, Outreach. In a letter dated May 5th and published late last month by Outreach, Dolan praised the organization, which Martin launched this year, describing it as, quote, an important ministry ahead of its annual conference in June. Thanks for the chance to greet you as you gather for the Outreach 2022 conference at Fordham University, Dolan wrote. No one should ever feel that they are alienated from God's love or ineligible for his grace and mercy. Jesus' last words to his disciples before his ascension into heaven was to go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's outreach. End quote. He forgot to mention the other thing Jesus said frequently in sacred scripture. Go forth and sin no more. Pick up your cross and follow me. That attempt, the temptations that lead to that sin in particular are ones that I am ever thankful that I do not have to deal with. They're a real cross to carry. But Pastor Jimmy is saving basically to drop that cross. That's what he's telling people. Don't repent is what he's saying. Because dare we hope and all that. And that you can somehow follow Christ while not repenting of those sins. Sins that sacred scripture are so unambiguously clear about. After all, St. Paul got it wrong, remember, at least according to Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church. According to the LifeSite article, Pastor Jimmy created outreach himself, so he's not merely affiliated with it. I don't know if you remember this old commercial from the 1990s, but that an old commercial said he's not only the president of, I guess in this case, outreach, he's also a client. Well, or so it looks at any rate. By the way, did you know he's not permitted to talk about that part of his life at all? His superior in the Jesuits barred him from mentioning it. He never talks about it, which is kind of weird given the activism he does. But anyway, Outreach is the hot new group in the Synodal Church of the New Advent, judging from the amount of coverage it's getting in the news. It's highly influential, and is even meddling in the German Synod. It's giving voice to leading authorities in the German Synod, where the German bishops are calling openly for the church to create a personal conscience loophole to ignore what the Catechism says on the James Martin sin. That's pretty incredible, especially since that's supposed to be a moderate position according to what these guys want. It's a complete compromise from their real position. According to an article shared by Pastor Jimmy Martin from the Outreach website, we get a reminder that the church in Germany has been working to undermine this teaching of the church for 50 years since their Würzburg Synod in the early 1970s. That's remarkable. And I do wonder if then, I think he was bishop at the time, Bishop Ratzinger participated in the process and if he was a voice for reason and the faith there or not. According to Tradition in Action, he participated and dressed in secular business suits during official church business at that synod. The author of the outreach piece spends time complaining that the Catechism of the Catholic Church and the Magisterium have called the Pastor Jimmy Martin a sin since the 1970s, while admitting that the most bishops now favor outreach's position because they've adopted the secular world's position, but the sin in question is actually occurring in nature and says that the catechism needs to be changed. They said all that. And then we get this, quote, from the perspective of society as a whole, quote unquote, long overdue would be an appropriate formulation. Pastor Jimmy Martin relationships and regular relationships strive for the same values and face the same challenges. Fidelity and permanence on the one hand and alienation and declining desire on the other. All couples experience success and failure. And regardless of their fleshly drives, the church should always stand by their side to support them and convey a message of welcome, end quote. 
He then goes on and uses a lot of secular language to undermine the church's traditional position on this. According to the author, we are expect to expect a document from the German Synod. that will ask Francis directly and to formally change the church's teaching on the Pastor Jimmy Martin topic. We knew that was coming. And I'm going to give you a hint here. No matter what Francis does on this, he actually can't change the church's teaching on this. He can't. He doesn't have that authority. But what do they want? According to the Catholic World Report website, the German Synod is a statement against the Catechism. The Synod is itself. They may as well admit that it's a statement against the inerrancy of sacred scripture, since the church's teaching on this topic is based on the inerrant words of scripture and the call of Catholics to love even sinners. Not in their sin, but to love them nonetheless, because they are human beings made in the image and likeness of God. Such is what the faith demands of us as Catholics, but it does not call us to embrace evil itself. But the German bishops want nothing less than a change in the teaching of the church. They want the faith changed. The Catholic World Report article, because the story is everywhere right now, references the article I just quoted a little bit, but it includes some other information from the article. Quote, the German synodal way is aiming to change the church's teaching on the James Martin topic by proposing a conscious statement against the current Catholic catechism, according to a leading protagonist of the controversial process. The campaign appealed for the revision of what is described as defamatory and outdated expressions of Catholic doctrine, reported CNA Deutsch, CNA's German language news partner. In a seven-point list of demands, the organizers wrote, defamatory and outdated statements of church doctrine on the flesh need to be revised on the basis of theological and human scientific findings, end quote. One of the errors of the modernists we see going back more than a century is to force the church to submit to the secular world and its magisterium, which is the ever-shifting standards of science, the natural sciences. There are no permanent findings in science, or very, very few at any rate. Science is always changing. The body of scientific knowledge is always changing. Scientists are always professing to make new discoveries. The church, on the other hand, never professes to discover anything new. Those theologians the authors of that piece were referring to are modernists. And modernists are outside the church, trying to change the church from within its institutions by holding to heresy. They are outside the church in a very theological sense, in a metaphysical sense. They might appear to be inside, and they occupy offices and buildings and things, but they are outside the church. And look, I'm being nice. We're talking about the enemies of the church within her walls. And they want the church to submit to the world on this and a whole host of other issues. They reject at the most basic level that we're talking about sin. And in fact, say that the church is sinning by upholding traditional standards for human conduct in this regard that are rooted in sacred scripture. It would be remarkable if this wasn't something we were so used to in our everyday lives already. The German bishops were silent recently on another, but as always weirdly related topic, the topic of the Moloch ritual and access to it in Germany. The German government is moving to adopt American style laws on this, which would make Germany's very much more permissive of this practice than they are presently. And the German bishops have remained silent. Even the USCCB came out recently by an attempt by the coterie of Moloch in the imperial capital to really liberalize this practice and ignore what the court said recently. The USCCB even came out and said no, which I was surprised by because they don't usually take courageous stands. But the bishops of Germany are being silent. But of course they would be silent. In Germany, like in America, the German bishops are in partnership with the government there on a number of government programs. They receive contracts to take care of various government programs. And there's very real money involved. And so whenever you see this happen, it's rare that the bishops will do or say anything meaningful to oppose evil coming from the highest secular offices in the land. Cath.net reported on this, and there is always a link to the Moloch ritual in the James Martin issue. You rarely find someone or a group who is for one but against the other. You ever notice that, by the way, that they're always linked together? And the bishops were silent from the article. Quote, didn't they, all the bishops, all promised to be clear and courageous when they were ordained bishops? Didn't the ordaining bishops say to the candidate, to you is entrusted the testimony of the true gospel, the service in the spirit and in righteousness, leading to eternal life. Heed what Christ said to the apostles. Whoever hears you, hears me. Whoever despises you, despises me. But whoever despises me, despises him who sent me. And was the new bishop not confronted with the laying on of hands, the question that had to be answered unequivocally? Are you ready to proclaim the gospel of Christ faithfully and tirelessly? Are you ready to guard the deposit of faith pure and unabridged, as handed down by the apostles and preserved in the church always and everywhere? 
Are you ready to help build up the Church of Christ, his body? End quote. Those are good questions, and the silence is deafening. At least with the hypermodernists, they do have the courage of their evil convictions. They may obfuscate using an ambiguity to cloak intentions in Catholic-sounding language and ideas, but they defend some pretty wicked things rather openly, while often the other and better bishops are silent. Have you seen anyone in a mitre speaking against outreach yet, or rebuke Francis for giving Lady Moloch Holy Communion in St. Peter's? In the latter case, I know Viganos had said, has said some things, but any of the bishops who are considered in good standing with Rome who are actually fairly orthodox, have you heard them speak? I didn't think so. There is a lack of courage among the bishops, but after, after Bishop McElroy was announced as a new cardinal for the coming consistory in August, who could blame them? It's also tiresome, but I'll say this much. At least Francis and the German bishops are being pretty open with their boldness. That's the ben benefit of these synodal meetings. They're very much public, and they push their weird ideas publicly. So there's that much, I guess. What do you think about all this? Pastor Jimmy went winning. He's always talking about supporting the church's teaching on the Moloch issue, but always follows such statements with other statements that undermine the teaching authority of the church on that issue. And he always follows it with some bizarre rejection of the teachings about the sins of the flesh. And he always gets away with it. Always. He's never been formally corrected and silenced by Rome or by any bishops in his diocese. And why do you think that is? Let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. Share this on social media if you can. That helps a lot as well. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.